In chapter 1, market, we read what is there to buy. In chapter 2, we found out how much we can buy. Budget constraint. In chapter 3, we introduced the idea of preferences. Which goods or consumption bundles we prefer. In this chapter, we will learn about a way to describe those preferences. Utility. A utility function is a way to assign numbers to all consumption bundles such that if we prefer one consumption bundle to the other, we have to assign a higher number to the preferred consumption bundle. Or in more mathematical terms, if x1, x2 is a bundle and we prefer it to y1, y2 bundle, it means that we can assign a higher number to this bundle. So, we can see that utility function corresponding to this first bundle x1, x2 has to be greater than the utility for the second bundle y1, y2. Of course, x1, x2 are the goods in the consumption bundles and similarly y1, y2 are the goods in the consumption bundle. Now, once you've understood this, we need to understand that we are not really bothered as to what is the magnitude of this as long as this number over here is greater than this number. Because in a sense, we are not trying to tell you the significance of the numbers associated with utility function unless we are trying to compare to consumption bundles. So the numbers over here just have one purpose so that it can aid us in comparison of all consumption bundles. Now this kind of a utility function is known as ordinal utility and yes there is something known as cardinal utility as well where the value of the utility function is also important but we really do not want to get into that territory so all our analysis will be based on ordinal utility function over there just the order is important and not the underlying number even if we take three utility functions such that the numbers are very different in the three functions but still i am able to compare all the consumption bundles in the same order we are good what i mean is let's say i give you three choices of utility function so this u1 over here has 3 to 1 u2 is 1710.002 and u3 is minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 now bundles which we have is simply a b and c now just look at these numbers 3 is greater than 2 greater than 1 70 is greater than 10 greater than 0 0.002 minus 1 is greater than minus 2 is greater than minus 3 which means the ordering is the same only the numbers are different so all these utility functions essentially have the same meaning for us they are the same for us because essentially they are able to compare the consumption bundles in the same coherent manner there is a special transformation of utility function known as monotonic transformation over here you see there is no proper relationship between these numbers but let us say i would have made another utility function over here u bar and given it 6 4 2 now you see these numbers are essentially twice of u1 when i define u bar as twice of u1 i am just doing a monotonic transformation on u1 monotonic transformation means and strictly speaking positive monotonic transformation means that i am increasing the utility function by a certain way such that the order is preserved and when i increase the underlying utility the transformed utility also increases if two numbers have a specific ordering and if that ordering is preserved after a transformation that is known as
monotonic transformation for us so when we have a utility function we can always do a monotonic transformation and we will have the same utility function obviously the function will change but the underlying preferences which are kind of represented by the utility will remain the same so for us a utility function or its monotonic transformation mean the same thing till now we have been discussing about ordinal utility functions in which the magnitude of the utility does not mean much so a utility of 5 utility of 10 I mean when you see these things in isolation they do not have any significance to us let's say i give you that utility is 5 if i have to compare with utility value of 10 i can safely say that the underlying preference will make us prefer this one because u2 is greater than u1 so as long as the utility value is greater it does not matter what is the number inside the utility now yes there are certain theories which require cardinal utility function cardinal utility functions are designed in such a way that the difference is also meaningful which means that a five unit of difference between utility has some kind of meaning but in ordinal utility function this difference does not have a lot of meaning thankfully we will not be required to read about cardinal utility functions in our discussion of the variant chapter henceforth utility means ordinal utility always now the next question will be let's say i want to give my preference structure a utility function if the preferences are reasonable then you will have always a utility function which could be associated with that underlying preferences now you may ask what do i mean by reasonable preferences when we say reasonable preferences we want to rule out all kinds of perverse preferences now what could be an example of such let's say i give you a condition where a is preferred this is not greater than simple this is preferred pardon my writing a is preferred to b b is preferred to c and c is preferred to d you can also say strongly preferred because this is the preference symbol for strong preference or strict preference combine this you can have a is preferred to b b is preferred to c c is preferred to d what about i change this d to something else let's say in place of d i put a here c is preferred to a which means this guy over here is not d now this is a what does this mean this means that utility of a is greater than utility of b is greater than utility of c is again greater than utility of a how is this possible this is called intransitivity so this kind of a situation cannot happen for a utility function or rather for any function hence we cannot do this so when this is the underlying preference structure we cannot have a utility function associated with it but mostly we will not be dealing with these kinds of situations in our analysis or study unless specifically mentioned but if there is no mention of such an abstract kind of a situation we can always construct a utility function from a preference structure Let's take an example. U of two goods, or rather, utility of two goods, is given as x one into x two. So, how do we construct this kind of a utility function? Let's take a situation where x one into x two is equal to nine. Let's plot this. So, this will be something like this, and you can label it as nine, meaning the product of x one into x two is nine all across this path, or all across this. indifference curve if you remember our earlier discussion on indifference curves now let's say i want to change this to 10 so what i will do is i will make something like this and label it as 10 let me decrease it to 7 so it will be something like this so if you go in this direction you increasing both the quantities 
so naturally your utility will increase more is better and if you go in this direction you're decreasing both the quantities so definitely you will move towards a lesser value of utility function when i give you that utility u prime of x1 x2 is equal to x1 into x2 whole square is there some connection between these two utility functions if you're careful you can see that u prime is just equal to u square why because you see this guy is this which is this so this is a monotonic transformation under monotonic transformation the underlying preferences are reserved which means that you take u prime or u your preference relationship will not change so you will be using the same preference so just the utility values will change but every bit of analysis will remain the same so if you look at this diagram in this particular situation i can just label this 9 as 81 because this is square and this 10 as 100 and this 7 as 49 and we will move to a new value of utility function but the underlying preference structure will remain the same let's say you are in a flight and an air hostess comes to you and asks which do you prefer tea or coffee and you say either which means that tea and coffee are substitutes for you given the choice between a cup of a tea or a cup of a coffee you will be indifferent so let's write it like this that x tea and x coffee so if i give you one unit of tea and zero coffee you will be happy or zero cup of tea and one cup of coffee again happy which means that they are kind of summing up to one and it does not matter which one is one and which one is zero right so for substitutes i can say u of x1 x2 when we are talking about substitutes is equal to x1 plus x2 now over here we have taken a specific situation when a cup of a tea and a cup of a coffee are in the ratio 1 is to 1 what about i have a different kind of a ratio but still i have some kind of a substitution idea behind the two goods so in that case i can modify this utility function to accommodate a different kind of ratio and i can write it as a x1 plus b x2 so these are the two utility functions which can be used to represent substitutes and using the abbreviation subs you would automatically understand for substitutes and let's say we also need to plot it pardon my bad handwriting or bad drawing it's just okay let's take this example first x1 plus x2 let me assume that this is some 10 it means this is a straight line right and the intercept over here is 10 so this is your 10 this is your 10 just draw a line and if you increase from 10 to 12 it will go up if you increase or rather decrease it from 10 to 9 or 7 or 6 it will go down so if you move in this direction your your utility will definitely increase because you will have more cup of tea or coffee or more cup of good one and good two or more units of good one and good two and if you go down your utility will decrease you can check that the slope of this line will be minus 1 because the ratio here is 1 is to 1 now let's look at the diagram for a x1 plus b x2 case let's take some numbers for this a and b guy right let's take example that a is 2 and b is 3 so 2x1 plus 3x2 and let us suppose i have taken an example when 2x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 6 i can rewrite this as x1 by 6 by 2 which is 3 plus x2 by 6 by 3 which is 2 which is equal to 1 so again this is a straight line with 3 and 2 as intercepts so i can write this as 3 and this as 2 and here you go you have a utility function and i can label this as 6 utility for this will be 6 and if i have to increase my utility obviously i'll have to go up 
and decrease go down so you understand here right in this direction it increases in this direction it decreases what is the slope how will you check that out if you go down by 2 you have to go right by 3 which means the slope here is minus 2 upon 3 and if I just generalize this this will be equal to minus a upon b and it also makes perfect sense because if I just change the form of this line equation into y is equal to mx plus c you will have x2 is equal to minus 2 by 3 x1 plus 2 and if you take a and b you will have minus a by b as the slope for substitutes you can't make a cup of tea without sugar and milk so if i have to make you a tea or offer you a tea or serve you a tea then I will definitely have to combine sugar, milk, tea powder or whatever the case may be tea bags maybe so x milk and x sugar and I'm assuming that you have your uh, tea bags or tea pouches whatever may the case without combination of milk and sugar you will not have your cup of tea so let's say you take uh, one cup of milk and one teaspoon of sugar now if i do not give you both you cannot make the tea so let's say i give you zero cups of milk and one spoon of sugar you cannot make tea now let's reverse this one zero again you cannot make tea what about i give you one cup of milk and one spoon of sugar definitely you can make a cup of tea what about i give you two cups of milk and one cup of sugar again you can only make one cup of tea one extra cup of milk will be wasted similarly if i give you one cup of milk and two spoons of sugar again you can only make one cup of tea one extra spoon of sugar will be wasted now if i try to combine this this and this in a functional form I can say that utility for complements I'm just writing comp just understand this is complements utility for this can be safely written as minimum of x1 and x2 why so because you see minimum of 1 and 2 is 1 you have 1 cup of tea minimum of 2 and 1 again 1 1 cup of tea minimum of 1 and 1 one cup of tea zero and one zero one and zero zero so this is the utility function for complements and again i'm assuming a one is to one ratio let's say i have different kind of a ratio then i will need to modify this to minimum of a x1 b x2 similar to what we did for the case of your substitutes so we can completely analyze whatever we have to do with this case and we can generalize it to this whenever the need may be now let's draw this how will this look this utility function let's say i have given you one unit of x1 and one unit of x2 if i keep on increasing x2 will your utility change no because the minimum function will not change minimum will always be one so on this line I mean this line which goes from 1 1 this let me label it 1 1 upwards utility will not change because minimum will not change and again if I go in this horizontal direction again the minimum will not change it will still be 1 so this is one indifference curve when the utility will be minimum of 1 comma 1 which will be 1 so I can label this guy as 1 and let's say I want to increase the utility what will I do I'll move to 2 3 maybe something else and then just draw something like this and if i have to decrease it just go below and draw something like this so in this direction your utility will rise and in this direction your utility will fall and yes you can draw a similar kind of a diagram if i change this x1 x2 to a x1 and b x2 again now the point 1 1 will change it will reflect this a b ratio that is for you as a homework what will be the shape or rather uh, the graph of a utility when the function is minimum of ax1 and bx2 
quasi-linear preferences. When u, the utility of two goods, can be simplified as utility of one good plus the amount of the second good. So in essence, you can say it's linear in one of the goods. It's linear in x2. This logic when one good has linear component to calculate the utility for overall two good structure, we call that as quasi-linear preferences. And you might wonder that this is kind of a bit unusual to have this kind of a utility structure. But yes, there are some useful analysis which can be done on this. And if I can give you an example, if I let's say give v x1 as root x1 and x2 as x2, this is one example of quasi-linear. Then I can also have ln x1 plus x2. So these two are examples of quasi-linear utility functions. Now, obviously the underlying preference is quasi-linear preferences, but the utility for that preference is quasi-linear utility. Now, there is a way to interpret this as well. Let's say I label some IC indifference curve as 10. It means that I can just rearrange this and say x2 is equal to 10 minus vx1. Now I can change this label from 10 to maybe like 9. So then my x2 will be 9 minus vx1. If you can look at these two equations, you will have an understanding that the only difference between these two is the 10 and 9. So x2 will just have a gap which is represented by this 10 and 9 which means 10 minus 9 1 which means that all the indifference curves my drawing is a bit bad but you get the drift has a constant difference of the amount of difference between these two guys let's say i make it k1 and make it k2 so the difference is k1 minus k2 so the difference between two ICs, two indifference curves, which are representing utility functions or underlying preferences will be essentially K1 minus K2 or 10 minus 9 if those are your K1 and K2. So you can say that the ICs or indifference curves are just parallelly shifted if I change this value of K. Cobb Douglas preferences. Whenever you have a utility of two goods represented as x1 to the power c and x2 to the power d, this is your Cobb Douglas preferences representation. Generally, c and d are chosen such that c plus d sum up to 1. We will discuss more about this later. If you take c equal to half and d is equal to also half, your utility will be formed as x1 to the power half and x to the power half which means that it's just root of x1 x2 so let's say i want to construct an indifference curve for this so let me label it as uh, 2 for instance so x1 x2 is equal to 4 now when x1 x2 is equal to 4 i can simply make this as an ic over here this is your good 2 this is your good 1 and x1 x2 is equal to 4 now let's change it to let's say 3 so this will change to 9 so you can increase it to 9 over here and one more thing which you need to remember if you have not noticed till now is that these are rectangular hyperbola right so these rectangular hyperbola are like perfect representation of our well-behaved preferences you remember the assumptions for well-behaved preferences so generally the Cobb Douglas preference structure is used to give us the well-behaved preference example because they look very similar to what all the assumptions point out to of well-behaved preferences so what if if i choose c is equal to 2 and d is equal to 1 in that case also I can convert it to this form. How? So if this is the situation, my utility will look like x1 to the power 2 
and x to the power 1 if you remember that under monotonic transformations my utility value changes but the underlying preferences remain the same so i can represent the preference with a modified utility function right and that will be this if i just raise it to a power of 1 by 3 why 3 2 plus 1 is 3 so 3 so this will give us a modified utility function x1 to the power 2 by 3 and x2 to the power oh this was x2 power 1 by 3 so over here now the sum becomes 1 because 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 is 1. The concept of marginal utility is not very difficult to understand. Let's say you have a utility function u for two goods x1 and x2 and you keep one good fixed say x2 and change the other one. So what is the average change in the utility with respect to the change in good one the good which you're changing. So that will be delta u upon delta x1 keeping x2 constant x2 here is constant this guy over here can be said as marginal utility for good one and similarly you can do it for good two as well delta u is u of x1 plus delta x1 x2 minus u of x1 x2 and delta x1 is simply x1 plus delta x1 minus x1. Just to give a bit of an idea what's happening over here. You're changing x1 from x1 to x1 plus delta x1. And with respect to that, you have a change of utility from this guy to this guy. So this over here is a numerator and this is the denominator. Now, obviously, as this is the average rate, we can in the limiting sense when limit delta x1 tends to zero, we can say that the instantaneous marginal utility is just del u upon del x1 which means that i'm differentiating u with respect to x1 keeping x2 constant and similarly i can do del u upon del x2 to calculate the marginal utility for good 2 so this will be your mu2 and this will be your mu1 and just a corollary to these things that if this is the expression for average change, you can say that the delta u is equal to mu1 into delta x1. And if it is mu2, it will be delta x2, which is the change in utility can be represented in terms of the average marginal utility. And similarly, I can use the instantaneous marginal utility as small change in utility is equal to mu1 into del x1. Now, understand over here that this expression is not division of this but it's like an operator, right? I'll not get into the calculus of this, but I guess you are familiar with the idea of differentiation, partial differentiation. So this over here is your change in small change in utility with respect to your change in good one in terms of marginal utility of good one. The preference underlying utility will remain the same no matter any kind of transformation you do to this utility. And similarly, if you change the utility function, your margin utility will also change. But the underlying preference will not change. So what is the catch here? The catch here is that there is something known as MRS, which I've already discussed before, marginal rate of substitution. That kind of gives you a linkage to marginal utility. And how do I understand or use marginal utility for different preferences? What is the relationship between marginal rate of substitution, MRS, and marginal utility, MU? Let's say you have a utility function of two goods denoted by small u. So I can represent a small change in utility, du, as del u by del x1 into dx1 plus del u by del x2 into 
dx2 if you're moving along an indifference curve so definitely change in the utility should be zero then you will put it to zero so along an indifference curve this relationship will hold if this relationship will hold i can manipulate this expression to form dx2 upon dx1 as minus of del u upon del x1 divided by del u upon del x2 you can pause the video and try to work it out yourself i can think of this as the marginal utility with respect to good one so this is mu1 and similarly this is your mu2 and if you are familiar with the idea of this which is dx2 by dx1 a slope of my indifference curve and that is mrs so i can very well say that mrs is equal to minus mu1 upon mu2 let's say you are not familiar with this calculus and how do you make sense of it we have an analogous working for the average case when we are not talking of small change but sizable change in x1 and x2 so let's look at that case so on an average basis let's say i want to make a change in u delta u that can be represented in this way if you are familiar with the idea that marginal utility can give you change in utility so mu1 into delta x1 we have already done this exercise earlier about mu then we can add the other term for mu as well i know again i am moving along an ic so this has to be zero if this has to zero by simple rearrangement of terms again i'll have delta x2 by delta x1 as minus mu1 upon my mu2 now this thing over here is again a kind of average slope not instantaneous slope but an average slope so this is your kind of like an average mrs we have already done this before and this also is kind of like an ratio of average mus so just remember this this is not instantaneous because of delta you have this expression and if i replace the delta with d then you will have to use calculus and that will be the mrs at that point and marginal utility at that point over here the thing over here is this is between two points which are at significant difference between them but still they are along an ic so when you are along an ic then this is what you will do and once again i'll reiterate that marginal utility is not unique under monotonic transformation of the utility function so i can say that for the same preference i can have many utility functions and similarly many marginal utility values mrs or marginal rate of substitution is unique this guy is unique under any kind of monotonic transformation of my utility function you can prove this very easily let's say you have a utility function u and you do a monotonic transformation on this say v is equal to twice of u now if you do this there is a very simple thing which you have to do whenever you will calculate a marginal utility this two will come in both mu1 and mu2 and when you divide them this two two will cancel out from here i'm not doing this because this is pretty easy you can do it on your own i will do the more advanced version of this let's say you don't have a simple two which gets cancelled out let's say you have a function of u and i know that this function f is your monotonic transformation which means f prime is greater than 0 right which means the first differentiation differentiation is greater than 0 in that case what will happen is when you want to calculate the mu1 for this modified utility i'm labeling it a prime for modified utility or transformed utility you will have an f prime and then you will have a mu1 term here and similarly for mu2 prime you will have again an f prime and mu2 now 
obviously there are few steps which i'm skipping over here because those are very fundamental and you can get it if you know the idea of chain rule your new mrs is the same as your old mrs see the utility function has changed the marginal utility has also changed but mrs remains the same first question the text said that raising a number to an odd power was a monotonic transformation what about raising a number to an even power is this a monotonic transformation hint consider the case when f u is equal to u square so definitely this is a monotonic transformation when u is positive so u positive it's perfect but whenever u is negative this is not the case and obviously trivially speaking u equal to 0 does not make sense because in that case you are not changing the number by any way so for even power it's not monotonic for negative numbers it's monotonic for positive numbers next question you have been given eight transformations which of them are monotonic in nature so let's look at the first one first one is a straight line with a positive slope to definitely it's monotonic in nature so first is right second it's a square and a negative and we already know that squaring does not give you monotonic transformation for negative numbers so if there's a negative sign and a square none of them helps this u so this is not third this is again squaring right so whenever you are squaring you are not having a monotonic transformation what about four four is ln obviously v has to be positive for this to be defined but if v is positive ln is increasing in nature so u is a monotonic transformation what about 5 5 let me write it more clearly this is minus e to the power minus v so this will look something like this if this is your e to the power v this will be e to the power minus v and this will be your minus of e to the power minus v so in this case this is increasing hence this is increasing so this is monotonic transformation 6 is your even power because this is v square and we know this is not monotonic 7 is again your even power and for positive number so for positive numbers it's monotonic so that's perfectly fine 8 8 is even power for negative number no no not possible next question we claimed in the text that if preferences were monotonic then a diagonal line through the origin would intersect each indifference curve exactly once can you prove this rigorously hint what would happen if it intersected some indifference curve twice so let's draw an indifference curve and let's suppose it's going to intersect twice so this is point 1 this is point 2 the moment this happens one of the point can be thought of as x1 x2 and the other point will be to the right and to the top so that will be x1 plus delta x1 and x2 plus delta x2 so this point will have more of both the goods and as preferences are monotonic so more is better in that case this will be preferred so this cannot be on the same indifference curve hence proved next question what kind of preferences are represented by utility function of the form of u and what about v so u is this guy and v is this guy u can be simplified to x1 plus x2 to the power half and v can be simplified to 13 into x1 plus x2 so both of them are monotonic transformation of x1 plus x2 which is the case of perfect substitutes next question what kind of preferences are represented by a utility function of the form of u is the utility function v a monotonic transformation of u so this is a simple case of quasi linear preferences and this can be thought of as x1 plus root of x2 to the power whole square because this will be your a square this will be your b square this is 2ab and this can be written as u square and we know that x1 and x2 are non negative so in that case you can say that this is a monotonic transformation next question so over here you have a utility function u v and w so what does u represent this can be thought of as x1 to the power half x2 to the power half so this is cobb douglas and is the function v a monotonic transformation of u definitely not because the powers over here are different and over here the powers are same what about w 
over here the powers are same which means these two guys u and w are monotonic transformations of each other next question can you explain why taking a monotonic transformation of a utility function does not change the marginal rate of substitution so you can start thinking of it in this way that mrs is going to be minus mu1 by mu2 and you can also label it as slope and both of these two things represent the trade off and trade off is represented by preferences and you are not changing the preference you're changing the utility function to be more specific it's a monotonic transformation so preferences are intact trade off is intact so mrs does not change end of chapter 4